Terrier D-Lab with a new twist on amplifier repair. The guy at work said, you know, I like watching your videos. You got those cool scopes, nice meters, so on and so forth, and you showed the technique of how to go through an amp. However, if somebody out there wanted to do that, number one, they probably don't have those instruments. And number two, even if they had them, they probably don't know how to use them because this is the new modern world, right? You guys aren't living in the past like me. So he said, so why don't you show people how to fix an amp using a laptop or maybe a phone? Well, the phone's out, okay? Because you know D-Lab doesn't mess with phones. But I thought, you know what? I think I can do this with a laptop and show you an easy way to do it yourself. So here we go. So what's required to fix your amplifier using a laptop? First off, the wine is optional, okay? But the main thing you'll need is some type of a data acquisition module. This is a Mini Lab 1008 sold by Measurement Computing. They retail for about 150 bucks. You can find them on eBay and other sites for well under 100. I only paid 40 for this one. Then you're going to need some type of a signal source. In this case, I've got this little nifty battery powered Tenma audio generator because you're going to need something to pipe into that amp so we can watch the signals going through it, right? You can also use a guitar. However, the signal is not going to be consistent, but I will show you that that also works. So with a mini lab, you obviously need software, okay? If you used a Raspberry Pi or an Adreno, you could do the same thing. But what you're going to need is four analog inputs. I've got this set up for differential inputs, and we're going to measure four channels in the amp. Now to do that, I'm using this free software that came with the data acquisition module. It's called DAC AMI. It's very easily configurable. I've set this up to look at two plate outputs off the preamp section. And I'm also going to monitor the cathode current going to the 12AX7 tube. So this will be an example of how to make sure that your preamp is operating and that the signal is making its way to the output tubes. Well, here's a close-up of the MiniLab 1008 DATAC module. This is a USB device. This one actually has eight single-ended analog inputs, several digital ins and outs that I'm not going to be using at this time. But what I've done is I've configured this for four differential inputs. And when you do that, it eats up two channels. So now we're down to four. But the reason I did that is I'm going to be looking at the signals going to the output tubes. So it's off the plate of the preamp tube, which goes to the grid of the output tubes. Right? So I needed differential inputs because we're going to be looking at a sine wave. So part of the voltage goes above zero. It's going to go through zero and below, right? It's going to make a sine wave. So I needed this thing to be able to respond to that. Then channels three and four we're going to use to monitor the cathode current going through the preamp tubes. So you can see if your tube is pulling proper current and if it's balanced, right? So let's get this thing hooked up and I'll show you what it's all about. It's pretty cool. So to draw you a little road map of what I intend to do, here is a schematic of a Fender Princeton, right? Now this one only has one 6V6, whereas the amp I'm working on over there has two, right? But it's the same principle. So here's what we're going to do. Channel 1 is going to go right here on the grid of the first 6V6. Channel 2 will go to the other 6V6 that you don't see here. Channel 3, we're going to look from ground to the cathode of the first section of the 12AX7. And you're going to see the voltage drop across that resistor, which I'll show you how that represents current. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So channel 3 and channel 4. A total of four channels, so we'll check the integrity of the preamp section and make sure that it's transferring signals to the grids of the 6V6s. Alright, so initially I'm going to hook up the little Tenma audio generator. I'm set at 1.2 kilohertz. I'm going to plug him into the input to simulate a guitar or whatever your amplifier happens to amplify. Then we're going to fire up the DADAC. 
Connection of the little mini lab unit to this amp is pretty easy. We have our little ground lead, green for ground, right? So put him to the chassis. Then we have channels one and two, which goes through those capacitors I told you about. We're going to connect those to the grids of the output tubes, okay? So that, when you look at fender amps, is actually on the opposite side of where the tubes mount. So be very careful that you hook these to the side of the capacitor that's going to those grids. Don't put it on this side because there's three to four hundred volts there. Hence why I have the little caps protecting my module. All right. Now we're going to connect three and four. So three is going to go to this 1500 ohm resistor and four will go to this one. Okay. So if you refer back to that Princeton schematic, I'm measuring from ground to the cathode of the preamp tube, both cathodes, and I'm going to both grids of the output tubes. So now we can fire this thing up and watch the data act at work. To operate this data act, it's super easy. It's like a cassette recorder. See the play button? Bam! You hit it. And you'll see the numbers dancing around, see some traces here, but there's not a lot of activity because I don't have the amp on, all right? So let's flip him on. She's on warming up. We'll go back to the data act. Now watch our cathode voltages. You can see those increasing. So that's measuring about one and a half volts across to each one of the cathodes, right? So that's the resistor feeding the little 12AX7, kind of like a little Class A operation. So if I were to take 1.57 volts, let's say, and divide that by 1500 ohms, that comes up to just a little over a milliamp. And that's what you would expect from a good running 12AX7. So I've got about 1.58 here, 1.7 here. So it's a little unbalanced, but it's actually a very healthy tube, all right? Next thing we're going to do, I've got the audio generator set up. Going into this input, here's my volume. I'm going to bring up the volume. Now if we go over here to the screen, watch our little updates. And there's our grid signals. You see a really nice sine wave go into the grid of each of the 6v6s. And I can turn that down and bring her back up. Now I'm going to play with the trouble control. So it troubles down, troubles up. See how it turns into a square wave? It's because I'm driving her pretty hard. All right, so there we are, and I'm going to bring the trouble back. You can see the amplitude drops down. Remember, we're at 1.2 kilohertz. So yeah, the trouble is going to be active at this point. So there you go, a little data act showing live signals, which would take place of your oscilloscope, and live voltages, which would take place of a multimeter. So you could actually do a wellness check using some simple data acquisition. So let's say that you don't have an audio generator, and you'd rather use your guitar as an input. Well, that's what I've done. We're connected with a guitar. I'm still running my dad act. You can see the cathode voltages there on the preamp tube. Now, let's look at the sine waves here as I'm hitting my guitar. And you can see you could use this as a source for determining if you have grid drive to both of your output tubes. And I'm sure that you players out there that know how to actually produce notes at certain frequencies, you could probably play the right one and get a pretty decent sine wave to display. So pretty cool, huh? I was actually able to test this guitar amp using data acquisition. No scopes, no meters, right? Now, let's see if the data act can catch a problem with the amp. This is a new build, so the tubes in this thing are primo, and as you saw, has a pretty healthy 12AX7, right? Pretty well balanced, 
and it produces a nice tone. Now, we're going to put in an old crunchy 12AX7 from my box of losers. Now, this one is okay, but it checks low on gain on my tube checker. So let's see what the signal and the cathode voltages look like when we put this guy in. All right, so my nice Sawtech 12AX7 LPS is removed. The old cruncher's in there. All right, the amp is off at this point. Let's go over to our screen. You see our data act is sitting there at zero volts, no signal. Got the audio generator hooked back up. Kick him on. Let's watch our meteoroids. So here comes a cathode current. So you can see they're a little bit lower, but pretty well balanced on that old tube. I'll bring up the signal. Doesn't look too bad. Now, for the fun of it, let's disconnect the audio generator. I'm going to bring the volume up full bore. I'm going to tap on that 12AX7. See if he has any little microphonics that this thing could catch. I'm not seeing any activity there. So actually, it's a pretty good tube. But you can see that the indications did change slightly when I put in a weaker one. So there you have it. A modern way to test an amplifier. Not necessarily a tube amp. You could do this with a solid state amp just as easy because most things are referenced to ground. And depending on the data X system you get, you could have a lot more channels of data coming in and the data X will save that as a CSV file or an ASCII 2 so you can look at that data later if you're trying to capture something that's going wrong at a certain period of time. It's very handy stuff. So maybe if you guys find this interesting, I'll produce some more of these videos. Maybe the next time we'll evaluate the inverter circuit so we can watch the voltages and see if the sine waves coming off of that inverter are equal. There's many things you can do with this type of system and it would make a lot more sense for you to watch because you can visually see the testing rather than me doing hocus pocus with a scope and a meter. Hope you liked it.